Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and today I'm doing a very quick process video with you showing you how I made this sashiko or burrow um, inspired pouch. This is hand stitched uh, for the majority. There are a few little bits of machine sewing but you can easily do that with um, hand stitching which I'll discuss with you in the video. So yes, if you would like to watch how to make this then do stay tuned. This is a totally scrap busting project so the first thing you'll need to do is pull out any scraps that you have. I keep my longer thin scraps in this pink bucket and I knew that I wanted the colour of this project to be mainly blues so all I'm doing is just having a quick look through the, um, the bucket for any potentials that I like. I also wanted them to be of the same tone so you can see um, I've got another bag this is just purely blue scraps um, and I just want to make sure that they all go rather than having anything that's too bright or, or too dark having a nice balance. With all my um, larger scrap pieces that you can see that I'm going through here I generally colour coordinate those so I'll have a plastic bag um, for each colour of scraps or the main colours and just group them all together and it makes it really easy when it comes to doing a project like this. I am picking out some larger pieces but you'll see um, later on in the video that I do actually cut these down um, and I am swapping out any larger pieces that I find for example that is a smaller piece that is maybe not as versatile in other projects. So it's really versatile you can do this in any colour I think the traditional colours are more blues and reds um, for this style of project that I've seen online earthy tones but you, you can mix it up and do anything I think I'll be doing one in pinks and purples the, the larger piece of fabric that you just saw there that's going to be my lining fabric and then all I'm doing is essentially doing a, a collage with um, pieces of fabric. I like to add two or three patches of the same fabric just to make it a little bit cohesive throughout. So if I cut a piece up I'm cutting it into two or three strips and then adding it in several places. All I've used there as the backing is a thick piece of cotton. Um, it's quite it's an upholstery weight cotton I think I wouldn't recommend using anything any thicker than that because at points you're going to be hand stitching this and you might be going through maybe two or three pieces of your collage fabric plus then your backing so I wouldn't use anything like denim as as the backing you're not going to see that anyway um, a few when I was researching this project there was a few projects online where the back ground that they was using was denim. Um, I decided not to do that because I didn't have any but it worked out quite well because the hard stitching was a little bit hard going at some points. This fabric that I'm placing here is a very special piece of fabric. It's actually um, the arm of one of my Nan's pyjamas. If you followed my channel for a couple of months you'll know that recently um, both of my Nan's have passed away. This is a project that I'm going to be making for my mum and that's her mum's pyjamas that I've included there because I had to do a project where I um, made something out of her pyjamas. All I'm doing is ironing it all down just so it's nice and flat. With it being scraps, you know, you generally shove them in your bucket, don't you, and they get all creased up. And it just gives you more of an accurate idea of how the project's going to look. Now, I am going to add pins to this. Um, my if I was to do this project again I would actually thread baste throughout this and all I've seen people do is similarly what to what you do in English paper piecing just do large tacking stitches throughout the whole project just to keep them all in place because when you're hand stitching you generally want to fold the fabric or at least hold it in your hand and you don't want to get stabbed a million times so um, I would probably do it with with fabric tacking in the future and it uses a lot less pins that way as well. I'm sorry if you just heard my phone go off, I should have put that on silent before um, recording the voiceover. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm going to choose out a thread that I want to do the running stitches with or the sashiko stitching. You can buy um, specialist sashiko thread but I just decided to use some embroidery floss that I had and I just used all six strands of the, um, the floss. You might think I was a little bit optimistic to think I had enough thread um, on that small spool there. I don't think I even contemplate. <laughs> I don't don't think I even considered if I had enough at this point. So I did have to uh, pop out to the shops to uh, to get some more in the middle of the hand stitching. So all I did was just threaded a needle, just with a fairly long enough piece, and just went to town doing lots of running stitches. I started just by doing running stitches down the length of the project, just in a few areas and then I also did some in opposite directions and did some crosses and some type of zigzag sort of stitches you can find lots of stitching examples on Pinterest that's all I did and then um, you just let the fabric lead you and just do whatever you fancy what I did find is though it is more in keeping with the style to do the stitching closer together so it's more dense so your vertical lines are closer together that seems to be more appropriate. So all I'm going to do now then is um, I'm just folding over the pouch and adding some buttons. I just hand stitch those on and I'm just figuring out a fastening here. Um, I really liked this brown, it was like a piece of leather but it was too thick to go around the buttons so I just went with a piece of twine in the end and I do thread some beads onto the end. Um, I should have mentioned at the start of the video that you can do this project in whatever size you decide. I just did it the same size as an A4 piece of paper if that helps. And then we've got our lining fabric here we just put right sides together and we just do a simple stitch all the way around on the sewing machine you can hand stitch that round if you want to do everything by hand but i just wanted a little bit of speed and then you're just going to turn the project um, right sides out but what i should have done is just clipped the um, inner corners of the um, I've clipped the inner corners so that it turns better because when you poke the corners through you want a really nice sharp corner and sometimes if you've got a lot of bulk in the corner it doesn't turn out very well. And I just use the end of a hair comb, I have a hair comb especially for this and I just poke all the corners through and I find it's sharp enough but not sharp enough to go through the fabric like a pair of scissors would. And then you're just going to sew that opening closed. Again you can do this by hand but I just decided to do it by machine. You couldn't even see the stitching because the project's that busy really. So just do a simple running stitch on the machine and then I'm just going to give everything a good press just because I just find everything looks so much better once it's been pressed down. So you can see there a little bit more on the detail of the stitching that I did. And I think the backing goes nicely. And you will find that some of the fabric that you use will fray. Don't worry about that during the process, just tidy it up at the end. So this is how my pouch is going to look and I'm going to work sewing up the sides now. Um, I was going to do a blanket stitch originally to um, do up the sides, you know, a blanket stitch in the embroidery floss so you could see the closing, but I just felt that the pouch was so busy that it didn't need that. However, if you don't do as much stitching as me, you could add a little bit of blanket stitch detail around the edge. What I decided to do is just a simple ladder stitch with some um, regular thread just to close it up. There's lots of tutorials online about how to do a ladder stitch and it essentially becomes an invisible stitch. Um, you might use it for closing up um, that edge that we left open to turn it inside out but I find it really good for um, doing seams like this. And of course you could have done this on the sewing machine but I thought it was a little thick to go through on the sewing machine. And then once you get to the top end, the opening end, I was just sure to do quite a few stitches at the very top just to make sure that, um, because that's where the, any strain on the project is going to be, so I just did quite a few stitches there. 
and this is the final um, finished result with the beads on the end and you can just twist and tie it around the buttons however you like making those strings as long or as short as you want and you just twist it round and seal it up um, I gave this project to my mum and she's sealed it further down, you'll, show, you'll see how I um, wrap it around in just a moment, that's how she's chose to um, seal it up, just makes it a little bit smaller but it's still really nice, uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs>